Tim Welsh, Sugar Sean O'Malley got a program and they invited on Errol Helwani. Now, Errol's a very hard guest to get, right? He's over doing his own thing so often. He doesn't always have a chance to spread it around, but these guys invited him on. I like Errol in that context. I think Errol is the best host in this space, but he doesn't really get credit. He's, he's an undercredited guest. Very good. Number two. They start asking him questions. Somehow the topic leans to Conor McGregor. When are we going to see Conor McGregor? And then that automatically leans to UFC 300. And there seems to be a lot of dancing and tiptoeing around Conor and 300. And if that's just one of those things that's happening, okay, fine. But if that's being done on purpose, a manipulation, if you will, by the marketing department, it's a miss. It doesn't matter if you're a marketing department, a a multi-billion dollar company. Or it's you and your buddies trying to get something going off the ground in the garage, like trolling and information and misinformation just to get discussion going is going to be part of it. But with Conor McGregor, and the reason Conor McGregor has done his part to continue to do this and put this out is everybody jumps and everybody goes along with him. That is a good sign of power by Conor McGregor. If Conor says, I'm going to fight, before 300, okay, great, all of our focus, what are the dates, what, who's looking there, where are we going to go, mark it on the calendar. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to fight at UFC 300. That's the big one. I'm the biggest. That's what makes the most sense. Okay, great, okay, 300 here. Connor's going on there, so that's going to be the main event. Looks like a title fight is not going to headline 300. I wanted to predict that in a million years, but Connor says, wait a minute. Connor then has his coach come out, tells Ariel himself, no, we're looking for more like International Fight Weekend. The idea of 300 or prior to 300 is behind us. International Fight Weekend, here we come. And the one thing that happens is Connor ends up flexing all over all of the cards and looking like what he is, the most powerful guy in the sport. The moment a card thinks it's done, or an athlete who's already been called behind the scenes. There is all sorts of title fights, number one contender fights, dates, headlining acts, supporting attractions already done that you guys don't know about, all sorts of them. So when Connor comes in and says, I'm going on that date, then the person with that date has to sink real deep, get on the phone to their manager, am I no longer the main event? Main event's got to go, bother the office. The office comes back, says, quit reading rumors. We told you you're the main event. Quit reading rumors. Well, Connor said, quit reading rumors. It goes this way all the time, but it does achieve one thing. As long as you have Connor who can go this date, this date, or this date, and make you jump around, showing that his presentation is more valuable to you, the viewer, than anybody else's presentation, as long as that continues to happen, he continues to win. Now, UFC 300 seems to be the big one. I think that I would fully understand that. I think you're not going to have Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler on the top of a bill at 300 because That fight does not have a significance within the division. This is not an elimination fight. The winner of this fight does not then go into a title fight, for example. The winner of this fight is not guaranteed to go into a fight that would be a number one contendership to get to a world title fight, for example. The loser of this fight doesn't get much further away from that number one contender's bout than the winner of this fight would be. This is personal. This was promised. This was built up. This was discussed. This fight needs to happen. And you could also fully understand it's an awesome fight. Conor McGregor came out and was the favorite to this. The two and a half to one and moved to two to one. That surprised me. I thought not for nothing they were for sure have Chandler just on the activity. Just on the activity and the business, just beyond the lifestyle that Chandler leads. Versus that of Conor McGregor, right? If, if you didn't know much about either, you knew they were both really good, but, but one guy is not doing things in his personal life that are going to help him get to a goal, and the other guy is only doing things to help get to, him goal, to a goal. I thought there was surprise, and I know how good Conor is. I guess I just forgot how good you think Conor is, and there is something compelling there, but to put them on the top of the bill of 300 means you're going to have champions open over the top of them, or 
And see, it's the big or that would be so interesting. There's never a day when the company gets done putting marketing dollars behind you. There's never the day where they are going to call and let you know. But eventually, they will use you as the big shiny magnet pulling other pieces to it. The big powerful magnet, you're pulling pieces. That's all they want you to do. Get these other pieces close to you. We'll flip the script somewhere before we fade to black and go roll the credits. You never get told. And now all of a sudden, you just put a guy over. And if Conor McGregor were to be put on 300, he would not be put as a main event. A title fight will headline 300. So where would he be put? And as soon as he is placed in anything other than a main event, our conversation, our biggest draws, and our biggest stars are gone. Are gone. You cannot open, you cannot pull that curtain back for anybody, regardless of title. Regardless of significance, regardless of weight class, you cannot pull that cart curtain back for anybody if you're the biggest draw. So if that ends up happening to Connor at 300, it will be the tip of the hat. But he knows it. And if we do it at 300, what's the best spot we could do if we're not doing a main event? We're doing a co-main event? Okay, great. Are we doing it for three rounds? No, we're going to keep making up our own rules and do it for five. That's just weird. But fair enough. Or we let everybody have their shine. Let everybody have their allure. We get all eyes in the world watching 300. Maybe that's the fight that we bring in with the promo, with the trailer, with the package, telling you about International Fight Week. It's going to be McGregor. It's going to be Chandler. They're finally doing this today once and for all. Would seem to be a better use of time. Would seem to be more in line with the way things are done. So I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a number of great ideas. I know there are some real players, Nate Diaz included, that would be very interested in having a phone call about themselves versus Conor McGregor in what would be a massive opportunity by you, the fan. But we're not going to get to that until we get this other thing over with. So where are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? And for me, for the good news is every time I hear it's quicker. We're going to do it in February. That's great. Now we're going to do it 300 in April. Oh, okay, N not as great. I like February more. Well, why do you like February? I just because I want, I just want to get it over with. That's why. I think that Chandler has the opportunity to ascend to title contention, to be one of the best guys in the world. I think that he's wasting his time down here, but that's where he wants to be, and he earned it. I want, I, I want to get on with it. But when you are attempting to guess, and when you are attempting to place cards, you're not going to see Chandler and Connor, which is a non-title match. As a matter of fact, it's a non-contenders match. As a matter of fact, it is not the most sought-after match for either guy. It's a match that was promised, and we got to get it out of the way. And that kind of a match is not going to find itself at UFC 300.